Hello, it's Sean C and welcome to my Path of Exile video. So the intent of this video is for pretty much brand new players or very early level players in the game. You're following a build guide like I've got up here um, and you get to points to the build guide like Bandit plus Pantheon and you just go, what the hell does that mean? I don't know. And I've been there when I first started playing this game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of these sections explaining it. I'm going to timestamp it as well. So go check the comments for my timestamps uh, and I'll explain a little bit about each section not mega in depth but just enough to give you if you're you know if you want to watch it the whole way through you can or if you're just unsure about a certain bit like path of building i'll explain that through so let's get straight into the video all right so let's get into this build so the build i'm going to play here is a 3.11 which is a league it's in which is the league that's just finished the delirium league the next one is 3.12 which is harvest which is starting in just a few hours at the time of making this video um, and it's a one-handed Impale Cyclone Slayer build. So again, Slayer, if you're making a new character and you can't find Slayer, it's because Slayer is an Ascendancy. Um, each one of the classes at the start screen has an Ascendancy. Well, three that you can pick from, other than the Cyan. But yeah, you'd have to play a Duelist to become a Slayer. Cyclone is the main damage ability, and Impale is all, also like a different sort of mechanic. So basically, it incrementally adds damage. Um, so you hit them, 10% extra damage, and that stacks up to something like five to seven times, depending on what class you're playing. Um, so yeah, that's what this build's all about. And again, that is going to be your main damage and ability. So that's going to be in the six link. So obviously, this is a one handed build, one handed weapons have a max of three sockets, I believe. And as you can see, all my sockets I've got on my gear, um, they're all linked by this little gold thing. They don't have to be linked, um, but having them linked means they can support each other. So a Cyclone build there could have added cold damage. So when I do the Cyclone, it adds cold damage. So obviously, as you can imagine, um, if you've got five gems linked to that, that's five layers of additional damage or utility, depending on what it is. And then obviously you've got two, three, four slots here. And then you got your two free slots of your weapons. You can have two handers, and the two handers have a six link as well. So you could have two six links in that case. And also, um, you can get sockets in your, your rings. I don't believe you can get one in your neck. Maybe there's one that you can, um, but I don't think you can. Um, and again, just in case you're really basic to the game, or really new to the game, should I say, uh, the skills in Path are rather than being associated to your character, there's a skill gem that can be picked up off the ground and for, you know, you can buy them from the vendors and then you have to level that up with experience um, up to a max level of 20 and then you can actually corrupt them for a chance to make them 21 as well. So yeah, you put them in your sockets and then you can use them like that, like so. So then I can use my little spinny, spinny, spinny ability. Um, okay, so that's the main build for this guide. A little bit of introduction about the guide here. Usually people have a bit of a spin some accolades. So here you go, previous leagues, spent 10 results to clear all end game content. It'll tell you a bit about themselves, um, a bit about the build, just to make sure they you know, show their legit legitness. Um, he's got his Twitch and YouTube links there. So, you know, if you uh, like this build and think this guy sounds cool, go check him out. Um, again, not my build. So again, changes. So, sorry, I've made a mistake there at the start. 3.10 was the... Uh, 3.10 was Delirium. The new league is 3.11. I did think that was weird when I said it. So this is the new heart. It's basically what he's said is I've, I've gone in there. He's looked at this build and he's made it current for the new changes in the patch because every sort of 13 to 14 weeks, they add a huge new content patch um, or league, um, which is an economy reset. And it's a really good point as a new player to come in and play the game because everyone, I'm about to, the new league again starts in about four hours, I believe. You know, I've got over 700 hours in the game, which isn't a lot, by the way. Um, and I'm going to be level one. I'm going to have no gear. I'm going to have no currency. And if you start, we'll be at the exact same uh, playing field. Obviously, I've got the experience to quickly know which way I want to go. And the game is so complex. Um, but it's a good time to start. So this league, um, again, quite a few changes. And you said the stuff that's going to be uh, improved and the stuff that's been reduced by this build. So again. He may have been supporting this build for three or four leagues. And if you've been playing this build and you love it and every league, this is how you start. This is telling you what's going to be different from the last time you played. Again, pros and cons. Sometimes this is quite tongue and cheek. Um, the pros will all be absolutely massive and the cons will be everyone's going to be so jealous of how cool your build is. This guy's a bit more serious with his. Um, and I do look at these. Try not to take the cons too negatively because... Um, you can usually get most builds to a good place. Um, I've been turned off on builds in the past that had cons um, that when I actually played it, I didn't experience it that way. 
So we'll quickly go through some of these pros and cons. So this build can do high level damage, fantastic. League start, league start is important. So whichever guide you're gonna look at, if you're playing in the, the game new, and if you're on this guide, I suggest you would be. League start means that it basically doesn't need a lot of items. Um, because okay, like I'm gonna start this league shortly. I won't have any gear. I've, I can't go and use a really powerful unique from level one because I don't have anything. No, no one does. Uh, and SFS is solo self found. So something I would never play where essentially you can make this a character creation um, and it means you can't trade with other players. So anything that you want in the game, you've got to go out and find it organically yourself. Um, it's a challenge that some people like. I prefer to trade because if you probably 49 times out of 50, you find a really good item, it's not useful for your build. Um, but rather than that be completely of no value, you can just sell it to someone else. Uh, and that, that, that keeps the loot uh, engaging for me. Again, as I said with the league start, no required items, which is good. Um, they usually go tight together. Good clear speed again. If you're not a hardcore player, you're not going to be too interested in clear speed. Um, but it's nice to just fly through enemies blown up. And I mean, this isn't a this isn't that build. It's just a character. I want to show some bits and bobs uh, a bit later on. Um, but he's a cyclone build, so you know you just whiz through enemies like this. Obviously, I can speed around. It's yeah, it, it's quite satisfying to go fast. Tackles end game easy on a low budget. Again, this is all tying into you know leaf start, no required items on a budget. Essentially, that's saying none of the items are really expensive. Again, super important if you're a new player. Um, lots of room for min maxing. Again, so if you don't know what that means, uh, essentially what that's saying is you can start this build with no gear. But as you get to the end of the game, you find items, you sell them, um, and one of the best ways to sell that again is you can, uh, you know, you can sell it to other players um, using the in-game currency. Um, you can go and then buy items that are better and better and better. So you may start the league at max level at 100,000 DPS, and you may be able to push that all the way to 2 million and beyond in some build case. I'm not too sure how far this build can go, but it should be way, way more enough to do any content, but it's just fun to see how good you can go. Again, cons. Yeah, perfectly wild as a first show. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. So, Cyclone doesn't have a huge uh, area of effect. Um, so, as you melee, you know, you've got to be careful of your positioning because some mosses, bosses will squish you. Uh, meta build, again, if you know what that means, it just means this is uh, a popular build. Cyclone starts, um, it has had some nerfs this, this uh, league. Um, but just in general, meta means it's something that's popular, it means it's in demand. So the items that you want at endgame to get that really good item is going to be really expensive. So it's not an issue. You can, you can probably get to 80% of the power without spending crazy currency, which would be, again, enough to smash all content there is in the game. Uh, Leap Slam is bugged again. Not an issue. That's probably been fixed. Uh, it's not a tank build again, so you've got to dodge. So you can't sleep on this build. There's some builds where you've got such high survivability that you can tank anything, which is cool. So videos, uh, again... As I said he's probably been supporting this for a while. You know, we're in 3.11 now and he's got a video here from 3.7. So you can go in there and watch that if you want to. Path of building. So path of building is something you definitely want to know about if you're a brand new player to the game. Uh, and it's a third party bit of software, which as far as I'm aware, um, GGG, grinding Gear Games, and Make Path Effects are more than happy with. And essentially what you can do is you can click here and copy this link. Uh, it's called Pastebin. Um, Go into this app, which you can just download on the internet, Path Building. Um, go to New, go to Import, go to Import from Pastebin, click it in there, click OK, and it says the code is valid. I will say, however, in this league, they've changed the um, the skill tree quite a lot. And when you click Import on this, you get an error message. Usually, when you get that, what you would get is access to something like this. Um, and basically, it's the build in the it's basically the build so you can then follow the skill tree so you know which way you want to go depending on the um who's made the guide um they may have some notes in there has this got any in there no this hasn't so they may have some notes so at level 10 take this at level 20 you want to take this um again that might be just in the guide but what this allows you to do is you can go in there and you can change this stuff you can just go actually i don't have that yet i'll take that out oh now i've got that or oh, i want to go this way and then you can see the effects that has on your character I mean, you can change skills in game, but this allows you to theory craft and plan your build out if you want to. Um, whereas when you do it in game, obviously I don't have any refund points yet, but doing it in game, you have to use these refunds and you have to use a resource to get them. So it's just a good way of planning out your build and it's a good way of others sharing their build to you. 
so definitely get that if you're if you're looking to take any sort of serious um, look at this game and you like following build guides. Again, what I said here is an ascend is the order. Um, so there's four abilities there. So as you ascend your character, again, I'll leave a link to more about Ascendancy if you don't know what that means. Um, you basically unlock this. So each of the characters starts here. So the Duelist starts here, Witch starts here, the Templar starts here, the, uh, the big dude starts here. I'll remember his name in a sec. Um, the, oh God, the Duelist starts here and the Ranger starts here and the Scion starts here. And then once you get your ascendancy, you unlock one of three. I think they're all on the outside. I oh, know they're not on here. They're in path. They're in path of building. There you go. Uh, all the different ascendancies for each class are down here, and there's there's three for each. So um, obviously I've gone for the uh, assassin on this build, but you can have uh, these other ones as well. Um, and you have to unlock these four challenges. And as you can do each challenge, you will unlock these abilities, um, and these are really powerful. But you know, obviously you start here, so you could go that way first for the first two, or that way, or that way, or that, then go that way for the second two. And what the guide is saying basically is, you know, first off, go this way. Get that one first, then this one, and just, it's completely up to you. And again, once you start getting used to the game, more experience, you may go, actually, do you know what, I really like impact, and you might go for impact first and then overwhelm and then go this way. It's But if you are new, just follow what they say, and you can change it later on. You can change all your skills, so don't worry about that. Cause you've got a noisy tree. Is it too noisy? Yeah, it's really noisy. Sorry. So one thing I will say of path building is obviously, depending on the build, I'll just quickly scroll down to this section down here, leveling section. What that will have is, oh, this one doesn't have it, buddy. Oh, leveling tree. So again, these aren't working, unfortunately. Um, but they'll often have a leveling skill tree. And when you import that in, rather than being the full skill tree like I've got on this character, it'll just be a segment of it. So it'll say, do you know what, go down this way first. Um, and obviously that's useful because if you were playing this build from start and you went over here first, it may be that some of the most powerful abilities for starting are down here, um, but you won't get these until like level 80, 90. So, um, I mean, I think of this build, you come down here and then you go up there, for example. So if the if the guide does have a, a leveling section at the bottom, um, that tells you uh, a certain skill tree to start off with and then advance into a tree later on, do follow that. I'll just go back to that in a sec. So, Bandit plus Pantheon. Again, this is something that you may just not really understand what they're on about. And essentially, Bandit is a quest in Act 2. Um, and essentially, you'll meet a dude in the town. Uh, I think I'll go show you which dude it is. Um, and he wants to go and kill some bandits. Let's have a look. I'm pretty sure it's this dude here, there. Yeah, Emma Ramar. And so I think one's like there, one's there, one's there. And you go to kill them, and before you kill them, they all say, oh, actually, stick with me and help me kill the other guys. And depending on what choice you make, depends on your permanent upgrade you get to your character. Some of it's like extra stats, a little bit of extra resistance, whatever it may be. If you kill them all, you get two skill points. So... Most build guys will have a bandit section telling you what to do. It'll, this has got quite an explanation, but sometimes it'll just say kill all. And kill all is often a very powerful option because it gives you two additional skill points. And you do only have a finite amount of skill points. I mean, I'm level 92, how many have I got? It's hard to work out, but I think it's something like a total of 123 or 121 if you don't, if you, oops, uh, if you don't kill all the bandits. Um, so that's a permanent choice. So this is quite an important one. And if you start playing and then come and look at a guide and you're already like halfway through Act 2, you've probably already done this. Um, it's not going to break your build. It just might be optimal. Uh, Pantheon, again, this is something you start unlocking towards the end of the Axe, uh, where you start killing these uh, bosses. And as you kill the bosses, you'll unlock their souls, which is it's essentially, so you get press Y to get to that. But if you are wondering where any of these bits are, you can just click there and there's a quick way to get to it. You can pick one major and one minor. And they're just uh, mostly defensive, so like here, 5% reduced damage from damage over time, and 10% chance to avoid lighter damage. That's the top bit that's in blue. The other bits I haven't got yet, I'll explain in a second. Um, and then the miners here as well. So to explain, basically use a divine vessel. Once you get to maps later on in the game, when you do a map, there's certain map bosses that if you use a divine vessel um, when you're going into the map, you can kill that boss, 
and the vessel will capture the ability. Um, so you can see there, it will say if you capture Fraxo at the bottom there, you'll get 25 resistance, uh, 10 to 5 percent extra resistance against damage over time, chaos damage over time. So on this character, it doesn't look like I've done any of them, <laughs> um, but they are quite useful for min maxing. But it is very much min maxing, and they're quite situational. And I'm pretty sure you can change them whenever you want. So don't worry about. I mean, I'm not even got that one there, so um, I don't pay them too much heed. But it's that's what they're talking about when they're saying Pantheon. Um, again, they might have a little bit more text about options depending on what you're doing. Uh, mechanics again. So he's gone over explained and pale. Like I said at the start, it stacks up damage. So you hit them one, two, three, four, five times, and then you're hitting 50% more damage on that target. So your initial hit's a bit weak, but you start getting progressively more damage. Um, and again, there's something called Dread Banner, which increases your damage and power support gems. Um, all this ends up a cumulative of about 104% damage, which is fantastic. Um, so mana cost reduction. So, I mean, depends on the build that you're playing. Obviously, you've got a mana pool. Um, you see, I've got a full mana pool there. Um, but when I go back to town, um, I actually have some of my mana reserved is what we call this. So essentially these are auras that I've got cast um, and then you can tell I've got them cast, it's got a little spin on. And the auras, the way they work in this game is they reserve mana. So that one there, it says 92% mana reserved. Let me just move my little face a little bit. So yeah, the Herald of Ice, that's reserving 22%. Uh, this one here, 44%. This one here, bleh, nothing apparently. It does something. Um, and that means your maximum mana is reduced, but you get the massive boost in this. This one, look at the extra cold damage that does, so thousands of cold damage. Um, so just bear that in mind for a second. But because I've got reduced uh, a reduced mana pool, if I hold this ability down and keep casting it, as you can see, my mana is slowly going down, and I'm going to run out of mana. Um, and this, the way I've got it in this character, is certain parts of my character has abilities that when I hit the enemy, I get mana back. Um, I've got a leech. I think it's on my weapon. Uh, that's life leech. Um, I'm not lying, I've got it there somewhere. Um, but one other thing you can get is on your rings you can get enchants. So uh, in your your uh, hideout, this area, again, if you've not worked out how to get here, at some point really early on you should unlock the ability to come here and then you click on this button down here. And this area you can completely customize it and like move it to how you want. Um, I've not done hardly any on mine as you can probably see. Um, but I can then, if I wanted her over here, and as you speak to people in the game, they come and join you here. Um, that's just worth noting, again, if you don't know that. Um, so one of the things you've got here is your crafting bench. And when you put your ring in there, you can go down. There's an enchant you can unlock, which has minus three mana cost to channeling skills. So that's not all skills, obviously. Uh, Non-channeling skills, there you go, have a total to minus eight to uh, nine mana cost. So my Cyclone skill has five mana cost. So if I enchanted both my rings with minus three, I've got a free spell. So that's what that means. And that means you don't have to worry about spin, uh, running out of mana, which can be quite annoying. Again, as mentioned here, you can also get uh, minus 15 mana total cost, um, which you can get on chests, but it's very expensive. Forget about that until the end of the league. Um, at the end of the league, people are gonna be chasing that, so it's gonna be expensive. One of the early game options you can use is a Praxis Ring. I don't think it's, I think it's got it in the here. So if I see it later on, I will show you. Um, but I'm pretty sure he has, there you go, let's just look in rings, two sex. Uh, and he's uh, absolutely seen me off there. But essentially it's a unique ring. It's really low level. It, all it has on there is mana and mana reduction. So it'll make your spells basically free, depending on what you're doing. Uh, for this build, it'd make your Cyclone free. But, you know, you'd lose out the, all the extra abilities that you're getting. Let me move my face back over. Uh, so. There we go, back in. I accidentally moved my wrong, wrong screen. Um, so yeah, like uh, this, this ring that I've got here, um, as you can see, extra fire damage, global physical damage, dex adds cold damage, increased cold damage while affected by this, increased resistance, loads of stuff. So if I had that practice ring on there to make my cast free, I'm li missing out on all those abilities. So it, it's, a, it's a compromise. Let's scroll back up. Okay, so, or alternatively, just chug mana potions. That's not the end of the world. Um, some people don't like to do it. I personally don't. Um, one hand versus two hand again. He's just talking about the different options here. Two hands recently been buffed in this build. Uh, sorry, in this league. Um, but I think the dual wield in the other hand, blah, 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 blah. One hand 
Two one-handers get you 10% more attack speed and 5% more block, which is nice. Um, obviously, this guide is saying one-handers, so just follow what the guide says. Rampage, again, is giving you an alternative weapon you can use there if you're going two-handers. So then we get down to the gear section, and again, obviously, he said with this build that the gear is nothing that's mandatory, which is good. Um, however, he will explain it. So this one's cheap. Um, what he's actually done here, which is good. Um, he's giving you a cheap sample gear and you can just quickly flick through and go, oh yeah, I like that, I like that, yeah, or I can get that. Um, or an expensive sample gear. And then what he's also done is then explained each individual section, you know, here's four weapons you can use. Some of these are unique, but they're super cheap. Um, some of them are. Uh, again, rare weapons in this game are really good. Um, and you can actually craft your own weapons. I'm not going to go into that, but you can make the most powerful weapons in the game by crafting, basically. But you have to invest a huge amount of currency. Um, so yeah, you can just flick through all of these, uh, make sure that you're following the right one. If you're following a good guide, they will have all this sort of description. Um, bear with it. Um, some of this stuff might be a bit uh, complicated. So like Helm Enchant, for example, you're like, what the hell is a Helm Enchant? But essentially, another thing that you can do in the game, when you do your ascendancies and you're running these trials of ascendancy, at the end, you when you run it on the hardest difficulty, you can enchant your Helm. Um, and it's a random enchant that's uh, really powerful. You know, this one here, you can get 15% increased cyclone attack speed, which is massive. Um, and if you get that and you put it on a really good helmet for the build, you're then actually gonna have to decide, do you want to keep it? Because you've just created something that's got a huge amount of value. So you could probably sell it and then you could go through the rest of the build and get some really good weapons. And rather than having a 5% increase in damage, you could make, you know, a 200% increase in damage in your build. So. That's always fun. Again, stuff like boots. Um, I won't go into each one because, uh, you know, there's no need. Um, but boots is quite important to get movement speed. There you go, there's 30% on there. Um, amulet. So this is something that people sometimes get confused on. I say people. I mean, I've had this myself where this guy is quite descriptive. But anointment. Um, it'll tell you ones that are good to go for. But essentially, anointment, you know, if you come look at my neck... You can see where it says allocates Heart of Ice. So Heart of Ice on the skill tree is this ability up here. And as you can see, I've not actually skilled up there. Just having this anointed with Heart of Ice has given me that ability. Um, there you go. Let me work it out. There you go. So what that's done by having that anointment on there is saved me having to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's saved me eight skill points, um, which has allowed me to, you know, push elsewhere on the tree like down here you know all that is at the compromise of this um and the way that we do anoints again every sort of 13 weeks they add a new league and most of the time when they add a new league some of the mechanics from that league end up in the game um including anoints which i think was in blight league where you'll see this lady here sister cassia out in the world um, it'll be an exclamation mark like this on the map um just out like i say get out in the world and it's like a mini sort of tower defense game where Enemies randomly spawn in. You have to go and fight them yourself, but you've also got these towers which slow them down or whatever it may be. And when you do those challenges, you drop these oils. You can just see them, sorry. So different colored oils, uh, all the way up to gold. Gold oil actually sells for a lot of money again, so if you don't need it, just sell it. Um, if you go and speak to her and click anoint, you can put your neck item in there. Um, again, remember if something's corrupted, like this is corrupted, you see this is at the bottom. You can't anoint it, you can't enchant it, you can't do anything. Obviously, you can't enchant uniques as well, just FYI. Um, but you can't un even anoint uh, corrupted necks. So you can go and grab three of these oils, chuck them in here. And then that'll turn around and tell you what it does. And that's a really powerful ability. Again, uh, you have this sort of minor and major abilities on the, the minimap. Uh, sorry, on your skill tree. Um, the miners uh, tend, you know, just usually stats. Like, you know, not obviously there they're not. Um, but some of these mages are really powerful um, and there may be one that's really good for this build that's all the way down here and they're a good way of getting that is getting a vinyl ointment so what was that one that was saying it was going to give you there let's have a look so that's saying that it gives me steel wood stance steel wood so if you have a quick look i believe that's just over here there you go so there's steel wood stance so if i click accept on that my staff to deal more damage blah 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 you know, I'll get that ability, which just save me going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would save me seven skill points. Um, I don't want that because it's not good for my build. But that's how you do it. 
And again, go Google on the wiki anointments because just trying to do it blind like this, there's, you know, you look at all these different abilities that you can anoint and most of these you can get via anointments. So go Google it. I'll tell you which colored uh, uh, oils you need to use. Again, I've put some of the little bits in my backpack here just to quickly show you. So uh, the sort of main currency in the game, I say main, is Chaos Orb. Um, and as we go into this new league, as you find Chaos Orbs, these allow you to buy stuff off other players. Um, so if you go into the skill guide um, and it's saying, you know, you need to buy this, but you keep routinely not finding it, you can go to Path of, uh, Path of Exile Forum, go to Trade, and then you can look um, for the items, if I can go for the filters, uh, and then you can choose Necklace, blah, 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 and then search. And when you search for it, you'll see that people are selling stuff and they've listed it for a currency. You can just quickly whisper them, um, for example, this one here, this, you know, it's a, it's not that good. Let's just uh, say that, but say you really needed that for your build and you could afford not having the sockets on it. It only costs one of these alchemy orbs and you'll start finding these in act one. So you can just click whisper and then you go into the game and you can whisper that dude. If you do control paste in game, you can whisper him and then you can give him one of these alchemy orbs and he'll give you that item. So all this sort of currency, you want to get them and just keep them in your stash. So I've got like a stash. I've invested in the game and bought some extra stash tabs just because i play it a lot and i think you know i've played over 700 hours in the game and you know i've not given them a lot of money if i'm honest um so i can then put all this stuff in there um but yeah the main sort of currency is chaos orbs below that is alchemy orbs and depending on the time in the league exalted orbs uh, or anything from 80 all up to sort of like 160 chaos orbs so when you get one of these it's absolutely awesome um, and that will allow you to buy loads of good gear. You might see a build saying, really good guild uh, build, you can make it off just one exalted. So that's saying, say it's worth 100 chaos at a time, just for an investment of 100 chaos, you can get make that build. So let's flip back to this. Uh, da, 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 da. Again, Sass Anointments. Um, yeah, it, you, again, as you play the game, you might decide that you want to go for a different night to what this suggests, but it's better to follow the guide if possible. Again, if you're unsure what the, to do, because some guides won't tell you about anointments, what you can do is you can go to a site called Path of Exile Ninja, pweird.ninja, um, and click on builds. You can look at the price of stuff in the league at the minute, so it's on about currency. Um, an Exalted Ob is currently... Um, worth 187 chaos orbs, so it's got a high price at the minute. But you can go to builds. Um, say you, you know, we're playing a duelist, so where's the duelist? Uh, sorry, Slayer. Got to call my own game. And then you go to, okay, say a Cyclone uh, playing with Impale Support. I know it's got that. And then you can go look at this dude. So this guy's level 100, probably knows what he's doing. He's playing a 200 build, uh, build but you can go look at his neck and go, okay, so he's allocating Fatal Blade. So you go look at his build, Fatal Blade. All right, watch me spend ages trying to find this. Oh, maybe that's two words. Either way, somewhere on that uh, there is Fatal Blade, and that's what he's gone for. So you can do that. You can just follow what the people that are, you know, high level in the game are using, and and just copy them basically. That's what I do. Okay, so we'll keep flicking through. Again, rings. Um, rings are a really good place to get resists. One of the most important things uh, is watch me not have it. Yeah, uh, defense. Yeah, so one of the most important things is try and get your resistances, fire, cold, and lightning maxed out. And max is 75%. Um, I've not quite got my fire there, but I'm pretty sure some of my potions might help with that. I don't know. But it's important to chase them. And people often will follow a build guide and be like, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. And they'll either have too low life. I mean, this character's got pretty low life. Um, or they'll have one of these at like minus 60, like I've got there. Chaos is not as important. Um, it is important to start investing in, depending on what sort of content you're doing. But for the most part, um, yeah, get these sorted. If this is at minus 60 and a, a really high level of mob shoots a fireball at you, you're going to explode. Or more likely implode. Um, flask. Flask is something not to overlook. So... <sighs> You can see these flasks are blue. Um, you sometimes find these white, but you can go and re-roll the stats on these. Um, and you're looking for sometimes these immunities. So this guy here has got immunity to bleeding effect uh, during flask effect. And at high level end of the game, 
um, some of these bleeds will make your character lose its life really quickly. Um, again, curses. Curses might slow you down, might make you take more damage. That removes them. Uh, that one's gone for a speed boost. And I think this one, freeze and chill effects. Again, frozen, not good. Um, if you haven't noticed it already, the flask fill up as you're killing monsters. So if you're flying for a, a, a map or a zone, killing all the enemies, um, you can pretty much have these on full time. So that's useful to know. And you'll see like this lion's raw flask. I think it's this one. Uh, yeah, 23% 23 more melee physical damage during the effect. Um, plus loads of other boosts. Um, but if you look at the damage, and you can look at the DPS of your character here, you click on one of your main abilities, so this one here, damage per second, 24k. And if you use one of your ability, uh, like see I've used my potions there, that's gone up to 28k as the potions wear off. It's gone back down to 24, so they can add, you know, that, that added 4,000 damage. So there, it is important to make sure you try to follow the flasks uh, and not underestimate their importance. Again, jewels. Yeah, I mean... This is very end game. The Watcher's Eyes, these are going to cost you multiple exalts to buy, especially the good ones will cost you hundreds of results. So that's a very end game bit of kit. A lot of the jewels are like this, and they'll just have a few bits and bobs, and what they can be good for is getting an increased life, increased stats, um, stuff like that one's got plus seven all attributes. Um, so that's something not touched on yet is your attributes. Depending on your class type, where you know which you choose at the start is where you're going to have their most heavy stats. So witches have a lot of intelligence, um, you know, this guy's got a fair amount of intelligence and dex, a bit of a split. Um, but some abilities, uh, so for example, my life leech support, it needs 111 strength to use. And depending on which build and uh, abilities you're using, you may find yourself struggling to actually cast the abilities. So jewels and stuff like that that's got plus seven attributes, because these jewels can go on your skill tree, um, if you've not seen. Yeah, there's little points on there like this where you can put a, you can put a a socket in um so that will allow you to chase those little bits of stats that you don't need and then once you've got the stats and sorted then what it will allow you to do is min max and get that extra damage i won't go too much into these lethal pride and brutal restraint jewels but essentially what they do um when you put them in uh, your your skill tree uh, they'll affect so if you put one in here it affects abilities around it um so it might you know, it, it, some of them it changes. Some of these keystones, the, these sort of gold ones, it will change them. So if you put a lethal pride jewel in here, it will change what that does, uh, and that should be explained in the build. Um, again, it's it's fairly complex, so I won't go into it too much. Um, one of the things I will say, if depending on the number, so you see that it says a commanded leadership over one four three nine, what they will do is they'll make anything that's in that area that's a major like this it will have a random extra stat on there so like plus 10 strength or something like that and depending on that number is what happens so it's super rng you can spend ages trying to re-roll that number to try and find some good stats but essentially you just got to keep trying again won't go too much more into that cluster jewels i'm going to leave this alone um if you find a build that is really heavily reliant on cluster jewels i'd probably go and find another one uh just because I think they're a little bit in advance. There's a lot of RNG. Um, just because it says you need this, you've got to go out there and find it. Whereas if the game says you need to go here and get this, this skill tree over here, just go over there, level up and get it. Whereas cluster jewels, it's an item you find on the floor and you can put them in these cluster sockets here. Large jewel sockets, one there. You know, There's one here. They're all on the edge. And what they do is they open out like this here. They'll add an extra section. I probably should go and show you, but you can sort of build a mini skill tree based on what you want and it, again it gives you a huge amount of customization but for a new player it's a little bit daunting because you don't know which ones you need you don't know how to make the right ones you don't know how to find the right ones and some of the really good ones can be expensive so i'd stay away from it unless you just want to play around but they come in large medium and small and the large ones actually have sockets in which you can put a medium in and the mediums have sockets in where you can put a small one in so yeah you can very much create your own skill tree um, but as you imagine if you've got a large a medium and a small you're investing sort of 15 of your skill points in there. So it does reduce the amount you can get on the actual tree. So it's just worth taking in uh, to note. Um, again, skill gems. Okay. Wow, this has taken a long time. But, uh, you know, feel free to, uh, to skip to the section you need. As I mentioned before, Cyclone's the main build, uh, main item in this build. And all these other uh, ones here, support, 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 support. 
all of these make this do more damage. And because this is your main damage and ability, you want to have that in your six slot item, making sure that they're all linked. Um, in this particular build, which is good, um, just follow this. Just follow exactly what this says as you can. Again, some of these abilities have certain levels, so you can only use this at level seven. Uh, I think you can start using Cycling from level 28. So, and some of these are even higher level than that. So use them as you can. Um, but what it's saying here is this last one here. So the close combat is a flex slot. So what it's saying is depending how you like to play the game, you could choose one of these instead, which is quite cool. I like that. Ignore these awakened ones here for now. Essentially, they're fairly recently added to the game and it's a min max and opportunity where you can spend a lot of money and you can get it's the same gem, but it's slightly more damage. Um, so that's once you've got to the end of the game, this is how you can increase your damage getting some of these uh, awakened support gems. So that's your main ability. This one here is like an extra sort of mini damage ability. This one's a defensive ability. This is mobility. Um, these, and then you've got origin utility. So obviously your six links going to have your main weapon on, um, which would be on your sorry your main chest, your main damage ability on. Um, something like Molten Shell, this is a defensive ability, which is in a free slot. And what he's got on here is cast and damage taken support. So when he takes damage, a certain amount of damage, he'll cast Molten Shell and Endure and Cry. So that's quite useful to have these sort of cast when damage taken. There's some of them cast when critical strike. And there are support gems that support the skills of socketed with and it'll cast them autonomously. Um, and that just makes for a really smooth play style. Again, Leap Slam, he's gone for that here, has his uh, movement ability, and what his has got is insurance charges, which reduce the damage you take, which is good. Blood Magic, which makes it have a mana, instead of having a mana cost, it has a life cost. Not a huge amount, but it means you can spam it without worrying about mana cost. Uh, and again, faster attack, so he just uses that 50% faster by there, that's that's awesome. Uh, auras, again, I briefly touched on it earlier on, but Auras Reserve, you can see mana reserve 50%, Mana reserve 10%, mana reserve 25%, mana reserve 10%. Uh, precision, I don't know why it's not showing what it reserves. But essentially, you may sometimes find a build and you put all this, the auras on that it says and it reserves a mana like this, but you can't cast them all. And you're like, why the hell can I not cast it? Uh, and that's because of the enlightened support gem. So this starts at level one and goes to a max to level four. Level four is quite expensive. So you may just use level three. But as you can see, mana multiplier, the third stat there, is 96%. So I think at level one it starts 100%, which basically means it does nothing. Um, but at that that 4%, it means rather than this be 50%, uh, it's actually going to use a lot less. So on my character I've got here, um, I have a enlightened support level 4. I've splashed out, and as you can see, 88% mana multiplier. So I've got a Herald of Ice gem in here. Now let's have a look at a better one. So Hatred, 50% of your mana reserve to cast that. But actually, my hatred only costs forty-four percent, and that's because it's linked. It's supported by that gem. So, if you're struggling to cast all your as the game's telling you to, it may be because you don't have this, or it may be that on your skill tree somewhere you need an ability like this. So, sovereignty, six percent reduced mana reserved. So, there's quite a few abilities there, like four percent, four percent. Okay, yeah. So there you go. Straight away, there's already. Um, Quick maths, 14% mana is reduced mana reserved there, um, which will allow you to cast out just one more aura. And auras can be really powerful. So um, just bear that in mind that you've not met, missed that. And there's more than just these three on the tree. There's other bits. You can get jewels that have reduced mana, etc. And again, utility. I think this one's just got one. Uh, new portal, um, blood rage. That's like some life leech and stuff like that. So yeah, that's your main bit. So again, leveling section. Um, so what you're showing here is the leveling skill tree again. I don't have access to that. I'm sorry because it's not working, but it will just be uh, a link again to this. And rather than having all the skills on there, it will just have maybe this section of the tree and say at level 50, this is what you're aiming to achieve. And then once you get to level 50, start shooting up this way. Um, just follow what it says, uh, basically, and it should, shouldn't lead you too far astray. Um, I'll ignore that bit there, but essentially you can vendor stuff to, you can sell stuff to vendors and it, there's certain hidden recipes, but it's not necessarily advanced, but I've never really used it too much. Um, so again, he's saying starting gear level 110. If you're new to the game, you're not gonna have access to any of this gear, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you go and make a new character and you've got some currency, you can go and buy some of these on the Path of Exile trade site. 
um, using your currency and then your next new character will be a lot faster to level. Uh, again, he's got some more early game uh, abilities there. Uh, again, he's saying chase these. Again, you can go buy them off the website and skill gems. This is uh, quite a good place to start to look at when you know how you're going to level. So I think I've briefly mentioned that everyone, but uh, Cyclone requires level 28 to use. So if you want to play this build and want to start leveling with Cyclone, you can't. Like it, it's not an option, um, as far as I, as far as I'm aware. So he's saying you start the game with Perforate, which is let's have a look, smash the ground. There's a big smash, um, and then you've got, he's said it's got four sockets there. These are all level one to use. And then as you hit level four, he's saying you know go for Blood and Sand and uh, Dash. So Blood and Sand. You know more damage steel skin you know defenses you know uh at level 10 you can get leap slam etc etc et so just follow this and it'll tell you as you get hp there's ah here's a practice ring i knew it was in here somewhere um as you can see there again reduce mana cost so that's going to make your mana issues go away at the cost of a bit of a uh, some stats on a ring uh so yeah that's it really just make a pay attention on the leveling guide Usually there'll be a bit of an FAQ. Um, not all guys will have this. Again, some people are very much pitchy as expert players, which is fine. Um, it just make take a bit of time to break that down, which is why I've made this video to try and break down some of these sections. Um, see if there's anything that I mentioned there. Again, yeah. So I don't have enough mana for to reserve all the items. Yeah, most people ask this. Uh, some gems as you level them, uh, they're going to cost more mana. I think it's saying precision does that, uh, or your enlight your, your enlightened support gem is at the wrong level so go down there if you've got any problems with a specific build he might have that or go on the log into the forum and comment or even better um go find them on twitch hopefully they're still active on youtube and um, give them a message and i'm sure they'll be they'll happily ask your question answer your questions they always have been in my um experience um yeah so that's it so uh, a few other tips obviously one of the things you can do is if you're trying to find gear that they say they want you to have, so uh, give me two seconds. I've just tapped off that. So in the gear section here, uh, da, 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 helmet. So he's saying, uh, let me go back to the sample gear. Expensive gear. Oh, God. Here we go. So say he's saying you want to go for this and you need to have three red sockets and one blue socket. This is something I didn't know right at the start, but essentially, as you can see, that's got an evasion rating. So if you look at some of my gear, you know, my hat has got armor and energy shield. So there's energy shield, armor, and evasion rating. Evasion rating is dexterity based and green skill skill gem based. Energy shield is intelligence based and intelligence skill based. Red uh, strength is armor. Um, and you can see, uh, is it doing that? Yeah, energy shield there, evasion. Doesn't have armor there, but yeah. So. What that actually does is changes the likelihood of the color of these sockets. So if you have something like this, which is armor armor bias with a bit of energy shield, you're predominantly going to be having red sockets on that with a, uh, the odd blue socket. So to get three green sockets is quite hard. To get four green sockets would be really hard. Um, and what you can use is these chromatic orbs, which I've got here. You'll find these all the time from a very low level, and it reforges the color of the sockets in an item. So if you go buy something that's quite cheap, so say you wanted this 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 hat, which I know is is fairly cheap, um, but the game was telling you you needed three reds and a blue. Looking at this item, it's got evasion rating only, high evasion rating, but only. So it's going to be quite hard to get three reds and a blue. Not super hard, but if you've only got three of those chromatic orbs, the chances are you're going to roll two greens, a red, a blue, three greens, four greens, and then you've got no orbs left, and you can't get the orbs you need, the sockets you need. So just bear the what type of armor or energy shield or evasion that's giving before you go and buy an item and then to get stuck re-rolling it. I've been caught out by that before. And that gets harder the more sockets it has. So if it's a six link item with only armor and you need to get six blue sockets on it, good luck. That's going to take you hundreds and hundreds of chromatic orbs to do that. Um, another little tip it is your weapon link. So your weapon swap. So it allows you to have two sets of weapons which you can flick through. Um, and obviously these weapons here have sockets as well. A little thing that I didn't know when I first started playing the game is these sockets These sockets um, actually level up as you're playing. So if you're playing the whole time and I'm playing with these uh, nice swords that I've got here, these gems are still leveling. So what that allows you to do is put item, uh, gems in there and level them up. And I've actually done that. You can see these are all max level. So these are ready now for me to sell. 
or corrupt. So what you can do, so this how a device here. Uh, let me go find a corruption thing. So corrupting is a gay, a, a, a gay uh, sorry, excuse me, a way of min-maxing your gear again. So I can corrupt that and all that's either going to do is do nothing. It's going to add a level to it or it's going to reduce the level. So let's see how lucky I get. So I got mid-luckiness, which is, it didn't do anything. See, it's level stayed the same, but now it's corrupted. I can't do it again. So what you can do is to sell that. So go sell that to another player that's a much higher level than you potentially. And what they're going to do is go and buy 30 of these and try and corrupt them or t five of them and roll these orbs in it and go, boom, ah, damn, level 20 again, nothing. And they're going to be looking for that to go to level 21, which is the max you can get. Um, so you can either, if this is an ability you want yourself at level 21 and you can't afford it because it's expensive, just put six of them in your off, off sockets um, and then you can uh, do them yourself. Let's just go for all these discipline. I want to get some good luck. Uh, no. I want to prove a point that you can get level 21. Nope. <laughs> Last chance. Nope. Right, let's just go for my whole bloody skills. Level 21, level 20. Uh, oh, that one's already equipped. Whoops, two sex. Uh, I will prove this point. Uh, that's already corrupted. I'm not going to prove this point, but it can either go down or up. Um, so don't waste these slots. Have have the crap out of me. I've got a random knife that I found with three sockets in, uh, and you can do that to make yourself some money. Um, you can even sell them at level 19, and people will push them to the rest for a decent amount of currency um, because someone might have switched the build um, halfway through and they don't want to play with level one abilities because your level one abilities do hardly any damage and you might find yourself in the same position where you want to you get to the end game you don't like your build so then you want to switch back and it's actually really expensive to buy these skill gems so to buy a cheaper skill gem buy one that's already been corrupted like i just said that lowers its value if it's corrupted and it's not got to level 21 or go find one that's corrupted at level 19 it's going to be a bit of pain but it's going to be dirt cheap and it's much better than using one that's level one um basically i think that's it so i mean i hope you really enjoy the game um follow your guide through um give them some feedback if you like it and again remember you can go in and change your ascendancy if you don't like the ascendancy you got you can use give me a second you can use these you'll find lots of these obs you'll get and just you, you absorb them into your character and then that gives you these refund points and what you can actually go in there and do if you didn't like your ascendancy for example you can refund it uh, and then once you go back to zero, if you go and do the trial of ascendancy again, you get the option to go to one of the three ascendancies. And again, you can use those refund points to go. Actually, I, I didn't want to. Uh, let's go refund passive. Didn't want to go down this way uh, at all. Uh, I want to go up here. So you know that just gives you the option to change your character. However, you can't obviously change your, your base class, so that will require you to make a new character. So. Yeah, thank you for watching, and yeah, I hope you enjoy the new Harvest League. I'm going to be playing it shortly.